I have the key to the facelift of the VW ID3, Volkswagen's compact EV. You can see here a nice welcoming signature where the headlamps go up, then the main unit goes on. Very interesting optional matrix LED. Then you also have this welcoming function and the light signature goes all the way around and here also the horizontal stripe. But new changes here to the face it is, you had this black cladding here before, that one is gone. Now a cleaner look, stamped in feature right here and also the front hood then looks longer a little bit. And also new in the lower part you have these air curtains now, I can also activate them here, nice light. The air curtains here, they are better as for aerodynamics and also once again a stronger look, now a cleaner more golf like look here for the ID3. Just one problem here, I think this part now here of the hood is too high, still better than the black solution. The length remains at 4 meters 26 or 168 inches, so compact dimensions indeed. Wheels would start from 18 inch steel, then 18 inch aluminum, then 19 inch and these are the top 20 inch wheels. They stay the same, but there are new 19 inch wheels available, soon going to show you that. Then there's also this new let's say a more matte silver style bow from front to the rear of the vehicle and before there were some more playful stickers here at the C pillar they are gone now as well so overall a more adult look for the ID3. If you really look closely by the way you can see here between wheels these are drum brakes in the rear. This was the same before and now after the facelift but the thing is why do they do that with EVs? Not for cost saving reasons only this also has an advantage because electric vehicles tend to gather rust, especially at the rear discs. Because in the front you have the disc for the full braking power. At the rear you hardly use the rear brake, especially with EVs. There's so much recuperation going on and in most cases you don't use the normal brakes at all. And when you need the full braking power, the car leans forward then anyway in the braking process. And then the rear brakes are hardly being used that much. And so it is also an advantage and something against gathering rust here at the rear axle. The power output is now always 204 horsepower and the acceleration figure to 1 km or 62 miles an hour 7.9 or 7.3 seconds. That really depends on the battery size you'll have, soon more to the battery sizes. Later there will be a GTX version which will be rear wheel drive only and if you subscribe and hit the notification bell we'll keep you updated here on our channel with that. Then here look at the rear lamps. They now are also illuminated right here. The inside part was so far not illuminated. So this is the only change here in the rear. It still remains with this nice white black contrast retro logo. And we have a very interesting thing here also at the rear part because look at that. Because you know, Auto go fuel with Thomas in 4K full screen full length means a lot of details indeed. And here you can fold the number plate and then this is not a real towing hook or something. So you cannot fit a trailer behind this one. But this is then for example for bicycles. So you can um, fit a bicycle carrier right here. And then you have hidden here this, let's say, yeah, still towing hook, which is not meant to do towing. And you can easily fit it then right here in the back. And then you can also put your bicycle carrier on here. By the way, you can also secure it here with the key, lock it, and then it, no one can take it off actually. And the funny thing is when you unlock it again, when you unlock it again, there we go, <laughs> then you pull it out like this, uh, like this, so here we go. So when is this <laughs> non-towing towing hook available and also the panoramic roof and the fifth seat in the rear. Very important difference. Only for the middle battery, so not the biggest one, you can get this thing for the bicycle carrier, the panoramic roof and the fifth seat in the rear. The biggest battery will not feature this panoramic roof and the fifth seat because of weight reasons on the rear axle. Colors, this one here, Costa Azul, yeah, kind of Thomas blue color, right? This one also a completely new color. 
And this is also a new color, dark olivine green. And here, starting with the warm light, it looks more greenish. But when the light is colder, more outside, you know, sunlight or maybe even with cloudy skies, then you see the colder the light gets, the more grayish it actually looks. So a color that is really changing nuances depending on the light, which is at the current day or if it's outside, inside. Are cars so much inside? Well, it's studio shootings, yes, but um, yeah, but so it will more look a little bit grayish than when the light is colder, as I said. And this, by the way, this color was also the reason I picked my pants today. So I try to match it as good as possible. <laughs> this vehicle here is Glacier White. And you can see here when this black cladding is gone. So with the white color, it was an even greater contrast. So an even cleaner look now than here for a white colored vehicle. And here in the side profile, you can see 19 inch wheels. So one size smaller and this design for 19 inch is also new and a very nice feature you can get from parts and accessories later on here the wheel caps that stay upright other when the car is parked that they always are upright like this and of course to some extent also while driving like a rolls roadster and you can of course spin it around here dj style also statically <laughs> Now to the interior with major changes. First of all, door closing sound. Very solid, I like it. Also here from the gaps, the build quality. And then inside of the doors, you know before they had hard pack here. Now it's soft touch material, so better build quality. This microfiber inside is also wider, so also softer and bigger area where everything is soft in high quality. That's cool. Ambient lighting is unchanged, but it's actually quite nice you can also change the color and also for example here now this is soft touch with contrast stitching now soft here so so much more effort to increase the interior build quality the animal skin free steering wheel is new so this is now even more sustainable less use of resources and also for the seats everything is actually animal free in the whole interior and also this part here, two thirds of recycled material with the base seats, even a hundred percent. So overall, less resources are wasted. And this is actually also the way to go. This is here the top sport with the integrated head restraint. Really a lot of comfort, really good sporty and comfort at the same time. We can also soon compare the normal comfort seats. So there are basically three different seats. The sport seat is the top one. Then there's the comfort seat that it has a little bit different ergonomics and separated head restraint. And then there's the base seat, which has the same ergonomics and the comfort seat. It's just with full fabric covering. But all of them are actually very comfortable. And also yeah, the haptics of the new steering wheel is really good. And they also tested it for the very same durability. Well, and you have to say, this is what we have expected from the ID3 in the first place. Everyone was expecting, let's say, an electric Golf, also quality wise. They did not deliver at the first stage, but now they have. You have such a higher premium atmosphere now in this interior. Again, this should have been like that in the first place, but now they finally realized it, gathered the feedback from the customers and now topped it up. And a nice detail here of the sports seat. Look at that, the ID logo at the inside of the top head restraint. It looks like it would be illuminated. It is not, it's kind of like a passive illumination. And here, different interior, you can see here the bright microfiber inserts, really cool. At a later stage, once again, you will also have the bright steam wheel again available, not at the beginning yet. And here you can see these are the comfort seats. The seat ergonomics, the form will be the same in the base seat, just then with all fabric. And here in the comfort seat is microfiber leather red mix and with a separated head restraint. Also looks really cool. The ball string is very nice and comfort difference to the sport seat is Hmm. Yeah, it feels somewhat different, but also very good. The, you know, the cushion is also really nice. Um, it's maybe a little bit different here because the sports have the integrated head restraint. They are both good, but can I really say which one is better? It's really tough to say. Hmm. I have to try again. Yeah, now again, the sports seat here, comparison. Both are really good in comfort. I think I would prefer the top sport seat a little bit more because it has here a little bit more shoulder support. That's somehow like, you know, enclosing you a little bit better. And it also takes weight of the lower back when you have more shoulder support here. So both great. And the base seat will also do fine when you want to save some money. But this one then would be my preferred one. 
One thing they didn't change are the window lever controls and that means this is controlling the front here, these two, and when you press this one here for rear, then it's controlling the rear. Hmm, so two buttons for four windows. Some say they prefer that one because when they accidentally pull or press it, and then they really know if it's the front or the rear, and sometimes you don't feel that, but I actually prefer the four switch solution. What about you? These nice play and pause pedals were actually an option for the base version. Now they're standard for all models. Slaps giving here <laughs> for the infotainment software. You see here these swiping gestures are still available, but why would you use them? I have no idea who wouldn't just do like this. So this is a new software version here, a little bit more stable than before. Their infotainment system will not win a prize in this generation, but at least it is a little bit better than it was initially. And also, of course, larger and better to read. You also have a games section right now. Well, this is here, the new game. So they want to do some Tesla-like thing. And here you cannot move the steering wheel, so you have to do it in <laughs> the screen here with the touch buttons. Yeah, I mean, uh, for the kids maybe when you're waiting somewhere in the parking lot, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem that smooth as the Tesla game though, right? Then you will also have a shop section. There, for example, at the later stage, you can also, for example, buy the GPS if it was not included for the vehicle yet. And then you can go like a lifetime GPS selection or just for a year or for a month when you lease the vehicle, for example. Or you say, hey, I've saved the money and just go for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Also, wireless connection is available. And then you can just enjoy your smartphone integration, which I would probably do most of the time. The real climate unit right here, either like this or use the sliders. They are not backlit yet. They will be backlit with the next change by mid-2024. And then it will also receive the infotainment screen from the ID7. Subscribe and hit notification bell not to miss the ID7 real premiere. And then later on, you know, it will also be backlit. Well, steps by step, but I think they should have included it already here with this facelift. And if you have the DCC, by the way, dynamic chassis control here in this drive mode select, you do not have to touch in the screen. It also works with the capacitive BS touch field in the lower part. And then go to the individual mode. There we go. Then you can also individualize the DCC, DCC, dynamic chassis control. That's the adaptive suspension. So you not only have presets, but you also can really fine tune it how more comfortable or sporty the suspension is supposed to be. Instruments, still very small, hardly any possibilities to change it. Why? Because they focus on offering a head-up display. And head-up display, very well to read indeed. And you can also have a snow mode, then everything turns blue. But when you're watching it white snow, you can still see a blue head-up display. Or when it's not snow, then it is white again. On the steering wheel, by the way, we still have these hashtag capacitive BS buttons here, for example, for the cruise control. VW will move back to real buttons. They have already announced that, but when they announce they something like this, yes, yeah, that's the voice control that sometimes fails, then it takes years often to implement these announced please changes. Wait. Yeah, please wait. Thank you. Open middle console with cup holders here, also adaptive. And this is placed in to put your smartphone in here for example and then you have this slider here for even more space like with two USB-C chargers. You cannot open the panoramic roof as in leaving light in but you can close this shade here if the day is really really hot. H-A-W-T hot. <laughs> Rear seating area again the nice microfiber seats then here in this trim and although it's not a long vehicle due to using of this EV platform here you have enough of legroom left, so it's good and actually fairly comfortable here also from a seating position in the rear. It's very cozy indeed and more comfort than in some of way bigger cars. Yeah, the rear, there you still have hard touch at the top part here, but then again the beautiful microfiber insert right here. Well, sitting in the middle part here is close with the headroom indeed with the 189 or 62 on the outside parts it's working but here actually i activate the lights with my head <laughs> <laughs> a 
And here you can see the five-seater setup here in the middle battery size. There you have this seat then, and soon show the other version. And here then cup holders, non-adaptive though, but everything here, also build quality wise, very solid. And this is then the ski hatch. And this one here being the four-seater because, again, with a bigger battery, you can only get four seats. Then you just have this integrated cubby hole here. Hmm. All right. Yeah, and that's the thing. You can get an optional fifth seat for the smaller battery, not for this one. Trunk capacity is at 385 liters. Backpack here still fits in a vertical way. The length is about 78 centimeters or like 31 inches. The width here is a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches, but actually quite good dimensions. And here I can already fold one half of the seats. It's like two thirds, one third split or the ski hatch. And the total length is actually quite good. Here at 155 or 61 inches. Below here, you have some space for the charging cables or for that non-toying toying hook like this. <laughs> is there a frunk? Well, no, there is not. Just a fill-in for the wiper fluid right there, and this has to go here. <laughs> so when, what about the batteries? So you either get the 58 kilowatt hour battery fitted in with this vehicle here, or the bigger 77 kilowatt hour battery. And with the bigger battery, then some exceptions not possible as well. The trim inside, told you that earlier, and the real red range figures, as we know so far from the bigger battery, around 400 kilometers, 250 miles, the small one more towards 300 kilometers, 200 miles. So there are no major range or battery upgrades. The later on available, even smaller battery, that one will be completely new, but then of course lower in price, but also then lower in the range performance. About the overall new pricing here for the ID3, it's hard to compare because the new version has more standard series equipment. So when you look at the configurer and say, like, oh, this is so much, more import, uh, so much more expensive now. Well, yes, but also no, because you get more standard equipment from the base model. And recharging 120 kilowatt for the 58 kilowatt hour battery and 170 kilowatt DC max for the bigger 77 kilowatt hour battery means somewhat 30 minutes from 5 to 80% state of charge recharging time. So the bigger battery recharges quicker, of course it's just bigger and therefore at the end of the day they both charge somewhat in the same time. The most successful VW models of the recent decades, just think about them, the Golf, the Polo, the Passat, the Tiguan, they were never cars that were about cost savings, but really going in the you know popular segment high volume, but at the same time also a great build quality in the interior. With the ID3, they missed this unique selling point. They have now corrected it with a higher quality interior. What else is there to come? Well, we will keep you updated, for example, with the VW ID7. We all have one preview of that. If you stay subscribed and hit the notification bell, you will also see new videos of that. Or, you can check out a competitor of this one here, recently reviewed, the Renault Megane EV.